Hello YouTube! I am Lightly Salted and welcome to the channel. In the previous episode I'd gone ahead and placed the fate of U96 in the very capable hands of the community. The feedback, while uh, pretty neck and neck to begin with, is fairly conclusive. Everyone wants me to try out those T3 torpedoes. So we're gonna go ahead and get Skipper here, Mr. Graf. And we'll kick things off by taking our orders. Okay, we're going to be heading off to sector BD, 2250 inside the square. We're going to be trying to sink as much as we can. Looks like we're looking at 7,000 tons to start with. And with any luck, most of that tonnage will be sunk with our handy dandy new T3 torpedoes. We'll go ahead and select that. All right, we're going to have to make some space here. So we'll get the skipper here to head off to the warehouse and sell our previously loaded torpedoes. Okay, the dock has loaded us up with, uh, looks to be six T3 torpedoes, and they want us to get a minimum of four hits. I'm going to take the opportunity to unload the T2s that I didn't want in the first place from the, uh, the last walkthrough. Uh, quick note, a uh, little bit of a bug happened uh, during the loading of the save. Mr. Watcher got rid of his spare parts and put them in the, uh, in the storeroom. Um, for reasons unknown. We've got him squared away again. Mr. Hagno still has his helmet. Mr. Oldorp still has his spares and rebreather. Our radio man is kitted out with his first aid kits. And the skipper is ready to rock and roll. And we're going to head off in search of Sector BD to test out our new T3 torpedoes. Now, I can pilot myself out in this fashion. But you'll recall from last episode, we actually unlocked our quick travel point. So what I'm going to do, and we've uh, spotted one of our own U-boats, we'll thank Command for the free money and uh, call that in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right-click on the uh, fast travel point here in the North Atlantic. It says here it will take us 6 days, 19 hours, 143 tons of fuel, and 196 food units with a navigation penalty of zero. However, as I pointed out in the last video, this is erroneous. This is not going to happen. So we're just going to go ahead and hit accept, reach our patrol sector, so an extra 500 budgets for us, fantastic. And you'll note we didn't even lose any time. We just instantaneously appeared here in sector BD. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is plot a course up towards the uh, northeastern section, and um, we'll get into a little bit of hunting. We've plotted our course, we're going to kick up the engines. We'll say forward three to start with to get us under. Mr. Hagnow, if you could take us down to periscope depth, please. You'll note that the skipper is still hanging around outside with his friends. Uh, um, you don't have to worry that they'll get stuck on the outside of the ship. I, I, although I, do ha I have seen bugs where that has happened to people. Uh, I've never personally seen it. But once you give the order to dive, the uh, crew is going to go ahead and climb down the conning tower and get themselves to safety. Mr. Osterman, uh, since we'll be underwater shortly, why don't you go ahead and jump on the hydrophone for me. Keep your helper. You're going to need him. And down we go. We'll go ahead and engage blue lighting to save on oxygen. All right. And as you can see here, uh, we are listening out in the water. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is lower our speed all the way down to forward one. And that should give us the maximum range possible without simply sitting still. And uh, what I'm going to do is compress some time here and hope to pick up some targets. And I'll see you shortly. Okay, we've picked up propeller noise. So something I haven't been able to touch upon yet. Um, your hydrophone operators are very, very good at their job. You don't necessarily need to be close to an enemy ship to understand that there are some in the area. Um, they're able to pick up the, the sound waves traveling through water at quite a distance. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is try to figure out where this particular group, a tiny group of two to four, is heading. So I'll place a point on the map just below the icon. And the reason I place it just below is if you click on it, it just lights up the icon for you. You can't place a mark on it. And what I'm going to do is give that a couple of minutes to do its magic. And uh, I'm going to try to plot a course for it. There's no, uh, there's no reason not to increase speed as we've already identified this, uh, this propeller. They are heading west. We're going to alter course, and we're going to go ahead and blow the tanks. I'll place another point just here. 
And using my ruler tool, I will plot out a rough course for her. So we should expect to meet her somewhere in this vicinity. It's going to take us a few moments to get up to speed. Uh, we'll give that a try right there. We've swapped over to diesel. And let's increase speed further and see if we can't catch up, catch up to this target. Okay, I'll see you folks in a minute. All right, and much like we've run into uh, in previous episodes, we have an inaccurate contact. So this target may be anywhere within a seven kilometer radius. So I'm gonna go ahead and get an idea of what we're looking at. So seven kilometers, that's not terrible, honestly. We should easily be able to find our target. We'll adjust course to cut into the circle slightly and hopefully make it a little easier on ourselves. Uh, Mr. Hagnow, no, I want you navigating, please. Skipper, let's get you on the attack periscope and see what you can see. Okay, we've got detection. Our tiny group is here. We can see that we've got a single freighter so far on the outside. So what we're going to do is get closer and then begin tracking along their route. I don't want to take Mr. Osterman off of the hydrophone at the moment. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is get Mr. Watcher to jump on the radio for me something we haven't touched on in previous episodes. Any of your officers can use the radio for the purposes of simply sending uh, transmissions back. And we've got a transmission from HQ on top of everything else that we're trying to do. We will not be using our T3 torpedoes yet. We started off with the T1s loaded in the tubes already. So we've got to burn through those T1s. Okay, we're gonna place a point on our ship. By the way, I'm perfectly aware there's almost no chance you can see anything on your screen when I do that. I don't have the red lighting engaged. Actually, what I can do, something I'd like to show everybody. Let's uh, let's have Mr. Hagnow turn us to red lighting momentarily so I can try to perform a little trick for everyone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the captain back onto the attack periscope and I'll try to show you guys a little trick. It's called the three minute trick. And this comes in handy for these ultra dark night missions in which you cannot get sight on your target. It also comes in very handy in fog banks where you can't actually use your skipper on the periscope with his stopwatch to determine how fast the ship is going. So what I'm going to do here, you may or may not be able to see this part. I'm just going to place a point right here on the ship where I believe I'll be able to place another point later. And I'm going to get the skipper in first person mode to bring up his stopwatch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unpause time and hit start on the watch in the same moment. I'm going to time that ship for three minutes. I'm not actually going to be looking at the ship. That's not the purpose of this part of the tutorial. We would assume that we have zero sight on these targets. I'm gonna allow the minute hand to go around three times. That should be three minutes in game time. At the end of that run, I'm going to place another mark on the ship and measure between the two points. And that will give me a rough estimation of the ship's speed. So let's go ahead and give it a try. And go. And we're coming up on three now. About five seconds. And stop. Okay. I'm going to head back out to my map. And as you can see here, the ship has traveled a fair distance since the last point. I'm going to go ahead and try to place a point right where I did before. Let's get the moon lighting her up a little bit. And my point will go, point will go right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is use my ruler and go from the first point to the second. I'm getting 420 meters. My rough, my rough estimation on this ship's speed is approximately 4.2 knots. So you take that 420, just imagine it has another zero or multiply by a thousand, and there you go, 4.2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep putting my money where my mouth is, and I'm going to have the skipper lock that in on this target. And skipper, let's go ahead and lock in a speed of four. I believe that boat is going four knots. So what I'd like to do is I'll have Mr. Osterman work on this ship for us just to have a little bit of balance uh, Mr. Osterman that message what did we have to say there crucial technology has been loaded on the freighter SS Point Pleasant Park it must be sunk at all costs all right we'll deal with the 
Point Pleasant Park as soon as we're done dealing with these folks. And very shortly, I'm going to go ahead and stop the boat and try to work on a little more detailed manual calculating. So we're going to be firing at target A, followed by a shot at the Empire Leech. I'm going to go ahead and use two torps per in the hopes to empty out those tubes so we can get those T3s ready. So what I'm going to go ahead and do since our boat is stopped is I'm going to place a point using our compass tool right about there at the nose where the torpedoes come out. And I'm going to draw out some circles. So we'll go to where one kilometer starts. That's 990, but it's pretty close. We'll go out to two, two, and we'll go out to three. So I'm going to use these circles as if we were completely blind. If we were simply sitting in a fog bank and we had no way of knowing where exactly these ships are. So we went ahead and tried to manually calculate speed using a quick and dirty trick, which may or may not work. And we are going to calculate distance and we're going to be firing roughly from here. So let's take a look at freighter A. Mr. Osterman believes freighter A is three kilometers away uh, at a clip of five knots, 257 degrees. Okay, Mr. Osterman, let's see if your calculations are correct on ship A. We'll go ahead and flood tubes one and two. And fire. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get this fella here. Now, this is my two kilometer mark. So if we go ahead and place a mark on the two kilometer mark here and move out to our ship, which is about there, we get 420 meters. So we're going to be off by a few meters, obviously, from trying to draw out that circle. So we're going to call her distance 4,100 meters. We'll set that. We'll go ahead and flood tubes three and four. And we'll fire. Okay. So with any luck, we'll see some fireworks shortly. All right. And our manual calculations were on for both torpedoes. Oh, and she's going down. Good job, Mr. Osterman. Excellent calculations. Oh dear, Mr. Osterman, one of your torpedoes missed. Tisk, tisk, Mr. Osterman, all the tools known to military might. Okay, so I'll go ahead and throw a pause in here. So as you saw, we manually calculated its distance, its speed, and using the same methods that I'd showed you in a previous video, we calculated its angle, and we managed to hit her with both torpedoes. So remember, if you're ever stuck in a fog bank or stuck in a situation where you simply cannot get sight on your target, you can still use the tools in the game, that being the stopwatch, and your map using protractor and ruler to calculate your torpedo solutions 100% manually. Okay, the leech got pounded with two, but she's, uh, looks like she's going to stay upright. The one that Mr. Osterman tagged, the torpedo seemed to hit in a likely area. However, she took almost no damage. All right, folks, you know what that means. We've got to pull up the deck gun. <laughs> and, and it turns out that Mr. Osterman's ship sank anyway, somehow, magically. Does it look like she's sinking? Huh. A little bit of a bug, I suppose. All right, let's clean up our map a little. I just can't stand the mess. And our one lonely torpedo is just floating off to oblivion. Oh dear, our, uh... <laughs> I've left the uh, ventilation on. Luckily, it makes noise. Ladies and gentlemen, it is vitally important 
that you do not leave your ventilation unattended. As you can see, it can happen to anyone. Klaus, deck gun please. Take your help with you. We have not yet been detected. This little eyeball will light up yellow for us when these ships have seen us. It's Mr. Hag now. Are we coming along on that deck gun? Could you move a little faster, please? We are 14, 15% visible. We should be visible to the enemy in just a few moments. Um, their visibility on us is 37% due to the sun's position of minus 60 due to the sun being down and the fact that it is cloudy. So while they have the ability to... S Aha! And they've spotted us. Okay, let's see if we can start tagging with some HE. Oh, that's money. Fantastic. And realistically, at this distance, all we're hoping to do is set her alight, cripple her a little bit. Looks like the Empire Leech won't be going anywhere for now, so let's get worried about the farther target. New contact, unknown group. That pops up when the ship you, uh, you have been targeting releases its lifeboats. The game considers the lifeboats an enemy group. Okay, so our first target is now sinking. And there she goes. Start throwing a little bit of love at the Empire Lionel. Is she turning away from us? She is turning away from us. Yeah, I'd say she's gone. There she goes. Mr. Osterman, let's phone that in. Okay, HQ is concerned about this transport group. All right, our convoy is tracking away from us. Luckily, Mr. Oldorp is no longer sleepy. Mr. Oldorp, let's get those engines rolling, please. We need flank speed. All right, our galley is getting a little low on food. Uh, we'll go ahead and give the folks some fruit. Bread in and more potatoes. Everybody loves potatoes. Okay. We are... In the path of our targets. We are pretty close. Um, they're heading roughly this way. We are within a kilometer. We may be a little too close. I'll back up a bit. Since I didn't show you the calculation the first time around, we'll set up to do our calculations on angle. Point here on the bow. And let him get farther away from it. So you'll make note that we have two red ships and a gray one. This gray one is a neutral target. I mentioned in an earlier video, neutral targets, you can sink them and you will get points once you get back to the port for sinking it. However, it will not count towards your total GRT for the mission that you're on. All right, that's moved far enough. We'll go ahead and get our second point on our ship. If I can get enough moonlight to see her. And there's the reflection of her bow there. We're gonna take our ruler Choose a north-south line within the path of the ship. We'll go ahead and draw a mark through it. Roughly like so. Grab our protractor. And we'll go from the top point of our north-south to the intersection line and in the direction of travel. Now, unlike my previous example, this is a, this is a ship that is moving east. So rather than doing subtractions on this side of our imaginary compass, we will simply use 79 degrees as our course. We'll go ahead and plug that in as 79. And if he's going 79, it is very likely that this ship is also going 79. We know she's an empire with a transmission tower. So I believe she's an empire tower. Perfect. That is our neutral target there, our uh, Swedish ship, apparently. All right, this looks like a likely area to take our shots from. Skipper. Let's, uh, T1, T3, and T3 at the SS Point Pleasant Park, which is our objective from HQ. And the MV Goya, which is an NA-1, a much smaller ship, will try to tag her with one. All right, Skipper, what can we see? That is our Swedish ship. That is our target there. 
and the teeny tiny NA1 is to the rear. Fortunately, these are far enough apart that I won't be able to see them hit on the periscope. What we'll do is scroll on in, get rid of the user interface, and hope for fireworks. I'll see you in a minute. There's one. I think the second may have missed. The second torpedo tracked just, just ahead of the nose of the target. I managed to see the bubble trail just as the fire bloomed. That's very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. One of our T3s wasted. And the NA-1 has been tagged. She is more than likely going to sink all by her lonesome at this point. Okay, let's bring the boat up and get to work with the almighty deck gun. And as it turns out, we do not need the deck gun. The SS Point Pleasant Park has sunk. The Japan, which is a Swedish ship, we are going to leave unmolested. She is a neutral target. There we go. We have no beef with her. We will plot a course to the closest target that we know of and attempt to get through those T3s. Very upset about that miss. It just skimmed the nose. And I'll see you folks in a moment. So I decided to simply plow into the convoy. I went ahead and gambled on the fact this would just be transports. And uh, turns out uh, I was right. <laughs> Mr. Graf, let's get on the targeting site. All right. We have what appears to be an NA-1 and a Empire Explorer. So what we're going to go ahead and do is dive the boat and give them time to believe that we have forgotten about them. When they've completed their maneuvering, we will uh, get a few more hits with those T3s. We have two of four, and with any luck, we'll get to four of four quite rapidly. As you can see here, the NA-1 has slammed on the brake. She barely appears to be moving. And the Empire has drastically changed course. We'll notice that they are alarmed. So this is what I've been talking about when I've mentioned torpedo maneuvering. So once they've sighted your boat, or you have hit a target in their convoy, all ships in that convoy will begin taking evasive action. So it will be very difficult to get a lock with a torpedo either by manual means, or by allowing your officers do calculation. We'll go ahead and get ahead of this very tiny convoy, and we'll meet up with them in a little bit. There's a better example of the maneuvering. You can see them changing course and speed quite rapidly. Your best hope trying to get torpedo solutions on maneuvering ships is that your shot will be positioned in such a way that they will turn into your torpedo. All right, we're ahead of our transports. They are no longer alarmed. Uh, having them change from alarm status to not alarm status takes roughly an hour in game time. We'll go ahead and set up to get our calculations, and I'll see you shortly. We're looking at 83 degrees for a heading. Three. Which means that this ship is very likely heading on a bearing of 83. We'll go ahead and get a speed on the NA-1 to start with. Five knots. Switch to our Empire Tower. When you switch targets for uh, making your calculations, make sure you click on it and lock it in place or you may be overwriting your previous target's values. So make sure the ship you're looking at is the one you're locked onto. Go ahead and lock in our NA-1. She is locked in automatically due to Mr. Osterman. However, for the purposes of show and tell, there is our NA-1. The meter. And the tallest mast is in the forward. Right about. All right, Empire, we're going to flood tubes. T3, T3. Let's do a T1 and a T3 at the Empire. Fire. And a 1 will take our next T3. As soon as our torpedoes have cleared the circle. Right about there.
G3 contact at NA1. And we may have missed the Empire. NA1, <laughs> the NA1 sank in a heartbeat. Look at that. We must have missed the Empire. There's our torpedoes tracking in the water. Not doing so well this time around, YouTube. I'm losing my touch. Really want to get that last T3. Yeah, All like right, it. then. I guess we're waiting for... I guess we're going to wait for that ship to come out of alarm status. I want that T3 hit. I'll keep tracking the target, and I will see you shortly. All right. We are going to allow the game to do a little bit of calculation for us. We will add all of our officers to the torpedo solution because I'm not taking any chances this time. All right, folks, fingers crossed, T3. Whew, knock wood. Oh, here she comes, right in the cargo bay. Trevor! Thank you, Mr. Osterman. And we blew her in half. She is gone. One shot. Fantastic. I know I'm sounding pretty gloaty for a person who has missed several shots already. But uh, that's the nature of the beast. Can't win them all. Fantastic. The MS Rigel is sunk. All right, folks, and with that, there's nothing left to do but to eat up these 2250. I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw some time compression in here, and I'll see you back at the dock. All right, folks, we're home. As you can see here, we had two members level up, Mr. Watcher. Let's go ahead and take a look at your skills. We could give him Salvager. The engineer can produce spare parts from scrap in the workshop in the stern torpedo room. Or Handyman. Repairs consume 25% less time. I highly, highly recommend selecting Handyman whenever possible. Mr. Goldorp also leveled up. And again, Handyman. Much more important to me than spare parts. I can buy spare parts. You can see, due to us uh, unlocking the, uh, the mission with the T3s, the Engineer could complete this assignment in 16 days as compared to the um, 24, I believe it said before. So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and get ourselves uh, one of our engineers on that. Because now that I've spent all that time and energy on it, I want those T3s. So we'll go ahead in management and pull Mr. Oldorp off this time around. Mr. Oldorp will head to headquarters for us. And begin researching our T3 torpedoes. Fantastic. T3s have been completed. And as I said in the last video, we're going to make sure Mr. Oldorp gets back on board immediately so we don't leave him behind. And that's it. Another successful patrol down. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the episode here. Hope some of the additional tips and tricks uh, on using your map and calculating your own torpedo solutions come in handy. Since moving forward, I have no way of guaranteeing being able to show off a few more of the things I had in mind, like attacking larger convoys, warships, and aircraft. Um, this is sort of going to turn into more of a let's play. Uh, it'll be filed under a different playlist, uh, so as not to confuse anyone. Um, if anybody thinks that's a terrible, terrible plan, go ahead and uh, hit me up in the comments down below, let me know. So moving forward on the Let's Plays, I plan on just grinding out some missions using U-96. Uh, we'll stick with what we know, get the boat uh, nice and upgraded, get ourselves some snorkels so we can sneak in some harbors, and with any luck, as we proceed, you'll pick up an additional tip or trick here and there. Once again, you can hit me up on my Discord, my Twitch, my Twitter, all in the description below. I've been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.